Randomly with Ronnie Jr. All right, and we're back. My name is Randomly Ronnie Jr., and we are starting the show. Everything feels good. We're going to take it back to the 90s. Things are going to be uh, fun, and the conversations are going to be fun. I got John Brennan. You know John Brennan from the real world, and the real world itself has actually had a, a bit of a resurgence with the real world homecoming. Um, country music is what you know John Brennan from. And just a lot of things, a lot of great conversations. If you grew up in the 90s, like I did, I'm 41 years old, this is going to be the conversation for you. Uh, John, I'm going to bring you into the uh, chat here um, because they muted. Okay, you have to turn off your muted mic, John. Your, 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 your microphone is muted. Okay, there we go. <laughs> What's you going know, on? John, you know my intro was extended because th there was a notation that said can't unmute unmute Mike because his mic microphone was muted. So I was like just pouring it on over there for a second. That's good, man. We got you now. Anyway, um, yeah. So welcome to the show. Um, tell me about just um, getting uh, a second chance at reality TV, um, the real world homecoming. We have just seen. Um, did it feel as fun as the original time? Because the first time, if I understand correctly, you did not audition or sort of want to do reality TV, even though it was an uncharted territory. Um, I would, I would imagine this time you did. Yes, actually, I couldn't wait to do the homecoming. When I saw the New York homecoming, um, I was just like chomping at the bit, hoping that we could pull ours together. Um, they actually called us uh, December 6th of 2020. And if you remember 2020, that was a crazy, boring year, right? And um, they called us and said, would, would you be willing to come with your cast to New York to do a homecoming show with the New York cast? I'm like, why would you send the L.A. season to New York? It was confusing. And then they changed their mind and they wanted to do New York's. And then they said, we're going to circle back to you. And I was really fearful that they wouldn't circle back to us. But they did. Um, it, they said, we'll call you in March. Well, it ended up being April, May before they actually did. But I was very willing and, 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 and ready to do our homecoming. Um, I had, had not auditioned for the first uh, round of The Real World back in 1993. I don't know if it's still the case, but I was the only cast member for years and years and years that never really auditioned to be on The Real World. They came to Nashville looking for an aspiring country music singer, which is what I was as an 18 year old in 1992. So um, they kind of found me and, 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 and I think they actually did something similar the next season in San Francisco with Puck. They knew they were going to be in San Francisco. So they went looking for a bike messenger and, uh, and ran across Puck. And so, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people apply for the real world nowadays, or, you know, back when they were in production, but um, there were uh, a few of us that they kind of knew what they were looking for and they went and, and found them. In terms of your music at that time, uh, this was out of Kentucky, correct? <clears throat> um, how, how big were you? I mean, in the, in the series, we see that Dominic and Tammy are like, wow, we didn't know, you know, he's, he's, he's huge in, in his, uh, <laughs> where he's from. So yeah. what did that feel like in real life? Did it really feel like you were sort of climbing that ladder in the music industry or was that sort of uh, just what did it feel like actually? Did he freeze on us? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I come from a relatively small town. Are you there? I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Are we back? I come from a, a relatively small town in Kentucky. Owensboro, Kentucky is my hometown. And, and I had, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if I would call it fame. I had a lot of support and I, I had, I had become an attraction um, as an 18 year old, 16, 17, 18 year old singer there in my hometown. So when Tammy and Dominic came to my hometown and they're you know, ready to get on a Winnebago and to go to Los Angeles, which would be the whole catalyst and spark of, of the road rule se uh, whole series, you know, kind of sparked from our, our Winnebago trip. Yeah, that was uh, what, how, how many days was the Winnebago trip? That was like five to 10 days or it was 10 or yeah, I remember being like 10 days. Yeah. Mm. Um, it was about 10 days. So by the time we were in a Winnebago all the way across the country, you know, we, we already had had seven fights together. So we're meeting our roommates 
who are moving in, you know, day one. Woo-hoo! And it's like, yeah, we've already been together for 10 days. We don't like each other. <laughs> so, yeah. But they thought, wow, this has been awesome. Let's make a whole thing out of this and call it Road Rules. And so, yeah, I had a concert that night and uh, before we le- left towards L.A. And, and they came. And, of course, you know, I knew the cameras were going to be there and this television show, whatever it was. And, um, I, you know, I had all my all my supporters there. And so it made it look like I was a really big star. But, um, you know, in Owensboro, Kentucky, I had a lot of support and <laughs> still do. And and so they were overwhelmed. They're like, wow, this guy's got a following already. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it felt really good. Even when I go back today and, and do concerts, I still have a lot of support and, and, and people that have followed me and supported me for now going on three decades. Um, for the people who know reality TV for just what it is today, can you paint the picture of what it was back then? And I also <laughs> want you, John, can you also insert what it must have been like? I imagine you use the show as what would have been a springboard to get the music out. It's a music channel. Reality yeah. TV is brand new. Um, but like I said, now it's such a business. You got soap opera stars doing reality TV, making hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. What was it for you? And was there any <laughs> trepidation? You know, your family was on TV. That's that's yeah. something that not every reality star had at that time. What was it feeling right. like for you? Well, and, and you say at that time, I mean, reality TV, What what is it? You know, now is something that totally different than what it was back then. I mean, so we had the New York season of the real world was the only example of a reality show that existed. I mean, when they explained to me, hey, we're going to put you in this house. You're going to live in Los Angeles in a big beach house and and uh, we're going to film everything. It's going to be on MTV. And wow, isn't that exciting? I'm thinking, look, I'm a country music singer, MTV, uh, you know. I just don't know a lot about, and it's not my, you know, my parents have it blocked on my cable. You know, I'm 17 years old. What do you mean reality TV? What do you mean there's no script? We just do whatever we want to, and you film it. Like, I'm not an actor. And they said, no, no, you're not an actor. You need to see the first show. Obviously, you need to see the New York season. I'm like, yeah, I probably should see it if I'm going to, you know, try to be on the show. And, um, you know, reality TV back in the early 90s, was totally different than even the homecoming was for us last year. Um, in a lot of ways, in a whole lot of ways. And we can talk about what those are, but I didn't, um, I didn't really know what I was signing on for, but I told Mary Ellis Bunham, who's the, you know, co-creator of reality TV, she and and John Murray. I said, look, I'm, I'm not an actor. And, um, I don't, you know, particularly (laughs) get along with people that well. And so like, you know, I'm going to just be myself. I'm going to say whatever I want to say. They're like, that's exactly what we want. I'm like, this is going to be bad. You know, this is going to be trouble. But uh, no, they said, look, can you imagine what this might do? The exposure for your singing career. You want to be a singer, right? You're 18 years old and you want to be a singer. Can you imagine what being all over television is going to, I'm I'm like, well, I don't know if it's going to be all over television. I mean, nobody's going to watch this. It doesn't even sound interesting. And for the next 10 years, I was, you know, they did marathons on MTV. I was, I call it Kardashian fame because literally from 1993 until about 1999 or 2000, I couldn't go anywhere Mm -hmm. uh, without autographs, pictures, people coming out of restaurants, John. And, you know, I was in a, I was in a rainforest in a waterfall on a mission trip in Puerto Rico. And people were like, that's the guy from the real world. Oh my goodness. I'm so recognizable. And a lot of people are like, I thought it was you until you spoke. And then I knew it was you from the sound of your voice. And so, I mean, it would be. Most oh. Famous reality stars that there are on the planet right now and how recognizable they are. I mean, Jersey Shore, Kardashians, any, you know, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, any of these recognizable people was us. I mean, we were just on TV 24 seven in the nineties and very, very recognizable. But, you know, reality TV's changed so much. Back back in 93, we lived in the house you were showing pictures of a minute ago, which was kind of cool because, you know, 30 years later, we were back in that exact same house for our homecoming. So yeah. it felt like the Twilight Zone. I'm back in this same exact house, you know, on the other side of the country where I live. Um, and I'm in the house with these same people. Didn't we kick you out of the house? Wait, didn't we sit right here and have this mm-hmm. fight? And now here we are 30 years later rehashing it all. It was yeah, very, you, very. You almost regress to not only those things and those errors that, you know, you know, happened as a young guy, but also, you know, it makes you feel maybe 
uh, caged in, you know, as an 18 year old, you know, your 18 year old mind isn't as developed. So I yeah. imagine just the sheer walking into that exact house must have done a lot. Uh, it was so in, weird in terms of I challenge. Mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you think of the real world or any type of reality show as being a once in a lifetime opportunity. Well, for us, it was a twice in a lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's just very, very strange. We even went bowling because 30 years ago when we went bowling, we had this huge fight. And so on the homecoming, we went bowling again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it'd been 29 years since, uh, you know, we were in this atmosphere of camera crew and, and just the whole reality scene. And we're in a bowling alley in Los Angeles bowling. And there's a cameraman standing in the alley next to us shooting us bowling. And, and I thought, oh, yeah, I mean, this this feels normal. Wait a second. This shouldn't feel normal. It, <laughs> it, it's really abnormal that this feels normal. And uh, right. That's when I realized that I'm, I'm totally comfortable being a reality star now is because that didn't feel weird again. It felt like second nature. And that worries me because <laughs> that shouldn't feel normal. But, you know, 30 years ago, we this is pre-cell phone. You got to think 1993. I didn't have a cell phone till 1998. And it was one of the, you know, the, the big flips. Yeah, the big where, Motorola. You, where you could only talk during peak hours or else your bill yeah. was going to be a lot. And, and you didn't talk for two minutes in one second because it mm -hmm. charged you for three minutes. So. No smartphone, nothing. No, no smartphone. Pa pagers no. first. But yeah, it was it was it was nothing like what it is today. So in 1993, uh, we didn't have Internet in our in our reality house. OK, we I mean, Internet in homes was kind of a rare thing. Every household didn't have the Internet. So we didn't have it. We didn't have a computer in the in the real world house and we didn't have cell phone. We would pick up a landline phone. It was a pay phone uh, that, that was our landline phone. And we would call a guy named Matt every day and we would tell Matt our schedule here. This is what we're going to do today. Well, here's the big thing uh, about the real world in the early days, um, especially my season. Everyone lived in Los Angeles except for me. OK, they weren't from Los Angeles, but they lived there. And so. They all had cars, jobs, friends, and apartments that they could sneak away to. I didn't have any of that. When I got mad, I was still just in the stressful house. But they all had an existing life that they that they could go to and run to. And now that was a, a big difference for me. Plus, they were 23, 24, and 25 years old, and I was 18 years old. So that was a much different experience for me. I didn't realize that Los Angeles was not like New York, where you can get around just fine without a vehicle. Um, you didn't even really have to know where you were going. You just got on the subway and, but no, LA is completely yeah. different. Like you can't go anywhere, um, without a vehicle and you have to know your way around. I didn't know any of that. My roommates were at a huge advantage, but we would call and Matt and we would. That, and that's and de deliberate too, because yeah. it seems like that's what they did with Julie from season one. They already wanted to make her the fish out of water and she was, but to make it even more emotional or more, uh, Oh, look at, there goes John being homesick. Yeah. It was because you were in a different situation than anyone else, you know, and, and no one else was everybody yeah. else was already acclimated to uh, their environment. Yeah. Not the real world house living, but the big overwhelming city of Los Angeles. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, they had a car, they had a job, they had an apartment that they could escape to. But I mean, the real world New York. I mean, let's face it, it. It was a story about Julie from Birmingham, Alabama. Mm -hmm. That um, Do you think she was the first cast casted. I don't know who was first cast. Her, her Eric. or Erica? Because they have that reunion Eric. special, and it sounds yeah. like that was drudged up, but I really wanted to know, was it Julie? I mean, maybe it was. I don't know. I always say Eric is the first reality star ever because he's the one that entered the house first. And I mean, they're, they're the two. I mean, when you think of reality TV and who started it, I mean, it's John and Mary Ellis, of course, mm. the creators of the genre, but um, it's Eric and Julie. Right. Who's going to respond to Norman, who I'm going to see next week, or who, who, how, how, you know, how she's going to respond to New York City? Everything, the whole show was about Julie's experience. And I really feel like, in a lot of ways, mm. our season, season two, was okay, how's John going to respond to, you know, living with a lesbian, Tammy having an abortion, you know, all of these different, being in Los Angeles, all of these things. And, um, I always say that I feel like um, I accomplished the goal of the real world uh, a little bit better than my roommates because I had a very close relationship with every single roommate. All of my roommates didn't. Like the very first night uh, we lived in the house, Beth, who's a very close friend, invited us to a party in Beverly Hills that she heard of. Well, we took the whole camera crew and everything. Well, we weren't invited to that party. We got politely asked to leave. And uh, Aaron and Dominic were so embarrassed 
the first night that we had ever met the roommates that they, they swore that they were never going to, you know, hang out with her again or, and, and actually for the next 20 weeks of the experience, they really didn't have much of a relationship with Beth. They kind of avoided her to the point when we kicked David out of the house, um, who I'm sure you want to talk about that. And then Glenn moved in to replace him. They pulled Glenn aside and said, Hey, look, you know, John's kind of cool, but this, and you know, Tammy got to watch out for Tammy, avoid her. But Beth, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to be friends with Beth because you know, X, Y, and Z. And so, you know, Glenn didn't, um, didn't, didn't form a relationship with Beth because based on what, um, he, she, she'd been, they'd been told by, um, Dominic and Aaron. And so mm. not everybody accomplished what I think the real world was really about. Um, yeah. I feel like I did. I mean, I could call any one of them today and, and, and talk to them and, as a close friend, but back in the day in 1993, no one ever, ever, ever would, would not, there would not be a producer or instructions or anything that said, Hey, could you, um, could you say this to your roommate? Hey, uh, at three o'clock, we need everybody to gather and have this discussion. That would never, ever happen. We did whatever we wanted to do and whatever we felt like doing, whatever interaction there was, and they covered it and they either captured it or they didn't. Um, but mostly they did capture it, but we were never given any instructions. Reality TV has changed so much now. I can tell from the homecoming where it was, it was kind of structured. It was mm. okay. Hey, wait, 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 don't have that conversation right now. We're going to have that conversation later tomorrow. It's like, well, this is a reality show. We yeah. You should be able to take, take that footage and you assemble yeah. it how you need to assemble it. Well, here's the thing. Reality TV has become such a moneymaker. And I remember when in 93, somebody told me, Hey, are you going to do this silly show that they're talking about you doing? I said, yeah, I'm thinking about it. I mean, it sounds pretty cool. And they said, well, uh, you better enjoy this 15 minutes of fame because this genre of television is never going to last. And here we are 35 years later and it's the biggest genre of entertainment. And um, you know, reality shows, if you count American Idol, if you count, you know, all of these, uh, the voice and all of these shows is reality shows. Competition which they shows. Yeah. Yeah. All the competition shows, the challenges is, is on CBS now and, you know, survivor and all that. I remember the, the first person to ever tell me about survivor was Cyrus. He goes, John, have you heard what they're going to do? They're going to take these people and put them on an Island and whoever survives gets a million dollars. I'm like, what do you mean? Whoever survives? Well, I guess <laughs> they're going to like eliminate people. I'm like, okay. I didn't survives can mean, you know, people dying. Yeah. And so, I mean, big brother, uh, survivor the, all of the these da- things the dating things. ones always seem the most extreme to me yeah just because how could you fall i mean love is such a if you can get love that's great but like to do it in the geist of a on television so fast is always the weirdest one um, yeah the bachelor the bachelorette all these mm-hmm. reality shows no one no one thought that's where entertainment television was gonna go and it's such a money maker now that they can't um risk putting a bunch of people, it's not, it's not, you know, cable TV on MTV and it either works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, we haven't invested that much money. They're investing huge amounts of money. So they got to get the content and uh, they've got it mapped out, especially on these homecomings. Here's the story. Here's the story about John Brennan's music. Here's the Mm -hmm. story about the David Tammy hallway incident. Here's the story about, you know, Julie from the new Orleans cast and how she's, you know, not religious anymore. Or here's, you know, here's a story about so-and-so and and their family. They've got this storyline mapped out and they've got, okay, on day three, we're going to play an incoming message clip and it's going to spark the discussion. And we may sit there for an hour to three hours and have that discussion to make sure we get the content because we've already mapped out what episode three, four, five, and six are going to look like. And that is totally different than... We have a little... uh... Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, connection problem, John. <laughs> John, are you there? Test one, two, one, two. We're live with John. Internet connection situation. Um, let me see if I should remove him and bring him back in. Let's see. John, are you there? All right, I'm going to keep on talking about the show and then when we get him back we'll get him back um john are you oh, there back you go. okay I'm back. are you there <laughs> I, I was gonna i was gonna go solo and give you what i loved about the show real quick though i wanted to t- two things i want you to really hit on before we move to the next part of this uh I'm st- i, I want to know you said you had the story about this matt character um i want to know what that involvement was and then i yep. wanted to know just to reiterate 
these cast members, what was special about them, yes, they were all from L.A. or living in L.A. rather, but almost everyone had some type of entertainment thing, you know, whether it was a casting. Uh, I think Beth was in casting and you were pursuing music. Tammy was pursuing music. Um, to me, that would have been the special reason to do the show, whether it's yeah. a springboard or not. Um, I, I, you know, there were years that I applied for <laughs> trying to get on, maybe it was the Philly season. I think I applied or a couple of seasons because I thought I wanted to do radio and radio would lead to television, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. So you, you, can you talk to me about just that sheer naive excitement? You may not feel that way about it now. You may be like, Oh, reality yeah. TV is more just a business, but can you talk yeah. about like, damn, I was excited to be there. I, I wanted to meet everybody in Venice, which would have le led to, you know, a big re record contract. Give me those, those yeah. memories. Well, for me, uh, Nashville was the small clique I wanted to be in. And, um, you know, meeting everybody in Venice beach wasn't really the goal, but to get the exposure of being on the television show and MTV back in the nineties, you know, I work with teenagers nowadays. And so I tell them, Oh, I used to be on MTV and they don't, they don't think that's super cool. Cause you know, like, oh, that shows that's that channel shows ridiculousness all the time. I'm like, yeah, but it used to have music videos. And they're like, yeah. what's a music video? I'm like, never mind. And so, but I mean, it used to MTV, you remember, it used to be what was cool. I mean, it, it dictated. Well, we, we, call it, we call it we call it MTV generation. Now we right. call things millennial, Gen yeah. Z, but it was always yeah. called the MTV generation. So people do right. gotta remember what that was. Yeah. And, and I mean, there's no way to describe it. MTV dictated culture, especially youth culture. But um, it, it was exciting. I mean, to be honest, I didn't want to I didn't want to leave Nashville and go to Los Angeles. I mean, that didn't sound like a, a thing that was going to help my goals. But when Mary Ellis was the one that said, John, we really want you. I'm like, why? Like, I'm, I'm conservative. I'm Baptist. I don't curse. I don't watch MTV. I don't like the music that's being played on MTV right now. I, like, why do you want me? And she said, because of all of those reasons you just mentioned, we, we, we want your interaction with these other roommates that we've chosen. I'm like, they're not going to like me. <laughs> yeah. And I was right. I was right. But that's why they wanted me. I added an element that they didn't have. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's, that's, that's all part of the project. I call it the project, the experiment. Yeah. But I thought, you know, I'm going to be famous, maybe. I mean, if this show works, who knew if it was going to be a success for, or not? And then I'll take all of that exposure, go back to Nashville, and surely a record label is going to want to sign me because, yeah, so there's me with Garth Brooks shortly after I was on The Real World. I had just been on a talk show in Nashville, and they invited me to his party where he'd sold some Brazilian kind of, you know, I don't know how many 10 million records of, of his big uh, album, No Fences, which was his, his you know, groundbreaking album that, that, that put him on the map. And I met him that night and they said, hey, this kid's on, John, this kid's John Brennan. He's on MTV. You're going to hear a lot from him. And, you know, I actually met him several times over the years and he remembers my name and, and uh, really, really been a, a kind encourager to me. But um, yeah, I mean, we were famous and uh, we had goals in entertainment. I did. Beth, Beth, did uh tammy did and you know does and and continues to be in the entertainment business but um i, I don't know if it helps you to be honest with you um to become a reality star uh i think could have and should have really catapulted me into country music uh because of just the recognition and and the, the instant record just just being able to put a face with a name just being being recognized in public is half the battle of any new artist um but um it i seems think like, it was it seems like it's built in music video network yeah. cool young on the cusp of what's cutting edge seems to be like the the perfect uh fit yeah i think it worked yeah nowadays it would work because there's so much crossover but back in in the mid 90s when I got back to Nashville, it's like, okay, this guy's a country music singer. He's from Kentucky, but what? He's all over MTV. Like that mm. doesn't make any sense. You just, you lived in Los Angeles on MTV. How is that going to translate to country music fans? And, yeah. and back then it was really boxy. It was country music or pop music or rap and MTV and country music did not interact at all. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so labels they, in Nashville looked at me and they were like, this isn't going to work. Like, like you sing and, and good. Was CMT, you're, you're MTV? A, was CMT, CMT was big at, at, the, at yeah. that time? Yeah, it was, but they, they, they didn't get me. They didn't get me. They were like, how are we going to make MTV 
work with country music. Now it would be easy. Now they want so much crossover and pop is country and country is pop. And, and everybody wants to do these crossroad mashup things. And it's so easy. You know, that's the coolest thing ever. But, but back then it was like, we can't make this work. We can't make this work. That, that picture on the left is me um, uh, getting out of my bus at the Hard Rock Cafe in Nashville. I was doing a signing party with Capitol Records. They had signed me. That man holding the camera's name is George Vershore. And this was about two years, maybe a year and a half after we moved out of the house. But they continued to follow my career a little bit when I signed my record deal. George Vershore was the executive producer of the first four seasons of The Real World. He is Mr. Real World. I mean, mm. He lived at, at the house practically and, and made the shows with such integrity and uh, and remains a friend today. And um, you know, he, he went on to other things after the first four seasons of The Real World. But George Vershore is the is the real. I mean, there's Mary Ellis and John created it and then jo jo George made the show. But, um, you know, it, it just for whatever reason, it didn't work out. Capitol Records signed me and for all of the 90s. I was touring as the guy from the real world and people mm -hmm. would come by the hundreds and thousands to come and, and see me perform. I was opening for big, big stars, Tim McGraw, yeah. Alabama, George Jones. And it was like, okay, this guy didn't have a hit record, but he's on the real world. I mean, he's the mm. MTV guy and that's who I was. And, and, and the public wanted to see me succeed. And, you know, what happened was I had Wynonna Judd's manager. He cussed me out one night. I fired him. I had Garth Brooks booking agent. He had a heart attack and suddenly died. And I was signed on Capitol records. And uh, they signed Trace Adkins and said, we're going to let you go to another label and we're going to go with Trace Adkins. And, and I never regrouped from those three things. Wow. And, uh, and so I never really had any success. And then, um, you know, I've recorded this album. When I found out I was going to do the homecoming, I thought, I'm going to put some more music out there. I'm going to try this. Yeah. Again. And, you know, the music business has changed so much. It's so much know, people selling. Nobody buys C. I, I printed a bunch of CDs and everybody's like, what am I going to do with this? I'm like, you put it in your <laughs> CD player and play it loud. And they're like, we yeah. don't have CD players. I'm like, yeah, you do in your car. They're like, no, John, cars don't have CD players anymore. Everything's so, Bluetooth now. Yeah. Everything is download. So, you know, it's on the internet and, you know, it's on Spotify and CDX records and Nashville just signed me to a distribution deal. So they're like, Hey, we love this, what you've recorded. Mm. And, and with this thing on Paramount plus this homecoming thing you just did, we're going to put it out. And I said, yes, please. Let's John, do it. That's what's so unique about the old days versus now. Back <laughs> then, it would be if you were an actress, but then you wanted to cross over and do music, they would look at you like you weren't really serious about your music. Um, if you're a reality star, they would look at you like you weren't serious about your music or whatever the craft that you wanted to do. Exactly. People don't realize the access. And I think it was the moment maybe digital and social media became so big that's when everything changed. For some reason, all of a yeah. sudden, if you had those numbers and those followings, they're giving you another TV show. <laughs> right. As we right. see, I understand and relate to you just a bit in my own radio career. I started radio in 2002, cut my teeth, you know, did all the blood, sweat and tears, finally became, I would say, bankable where it was, you know, ready to get to these big opportunities. You know, one of them was, I worked with Rick Dees, of course, as well. Um, I was on Fuse TV as a, uh, like a VJ um, the second runner up for this big contest so that everything was 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 ready but suddenly all of a sudden resumes didn't matter numbers mattered and it was right. just so odd to see that people who actually had cachet or a story or an experience did not matter only your numbers mattered which was one of the reasons doing a youtube channel was never what i wanted to do but when you when you look at the and that's why i like what you're doing with releasing music after paramount plus and uh the homecoming it's looking at the whole thing and saying, when I wake up in the morning, what do I love to do? Me, I love to do radio. I love to broadcast. So let's find a way to do it in the new medium. And I think that's what you're doing too. After homecoming, you're taking a little bit of that buzz because people definitely were watching the show and you're saying, I'm not done yet. Right? Isn't that the hashtag you use? I'm not done. I I'm ain't not done, done singing. singing yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was standing yeah. in the shower one day. I thought, I ain't done singing yet. Oh, oh man, write that song. That's your comeback song. I ain't done singing yet. So I wrote it, uh, co-wrote it with a guy in Nashville. And uh, and uh, I thought, I'm going to sing this song on our homecoming. They may not put it on the show, but I'm going to sing it. And uh, anyway, they did a real nice piece on, I uh, did a concert that night in LA. Um, it, it's at the same venue, actually, that I had sang at 30 years ago called The Borderline, uh, which they changed locations. It used to be out in Malibu, and now it's uh, in Thousand Oaks. But uh, it was neat to uh, to return back there because that place I had actually won a contest there uh, back in 93 on the original uh, real world. And so to be able to 
go back there and, and sing on our homecoming was special. All my roommates came and of course it, you know, was right in the middle of some COVID precautions. So, um, you know, we, we, they kind of had picked the crowd to be there and tested everybody. And so it wasn't really open to the public like it looked like, but, yeah. um, it, it was a great showcase for me. And, um, you know, just reality has changed so much. Like, I mean, I, I had in mind to pull that together and it was like, okay, it's going to be on Tuesday night. And then the producer came and said, Oh, we've moved your showcase. We're going to do it on Friday night. And I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, okay. That's not normal. Like normally I would, I would say I'm doing a show. Bring you the follow. cameras if you yeah. want to come. Yeah. But that's, you know, they did, like they've just invested so much money into this is what the episodes are going to look like. We've got to make it happen. We're not taking any risk that, that David and Tammy aren't going to have that conversation. Like we're going mm -hmm. to plan that conversation. And if they start to have it before it's time, we're going to stop them and say, Hey, that, there's a whole package. Yeah. They call it. There's a whole package. We got an incoming message with clips. You're going to sit on the couch and talk about this. Don't talk about it right now. Yeah. Oh, John, now is a good time for you to go to Irene and Beth and tell them about you've recorded some music and you have these aspirations to become, um, you know, uh, have a country music come back. That's how, yeah. you know, it's changed so much. My mom watches these, uh, these reality shows where they fix up houses and the couple goes and they're deciding which summer home they're going to buy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm watching this with my mom one day and, and she loves it. And there, you know, there's these two people sitting on a picnic table by, by a, a, a lake. And there's now the house number one, we looked at yesterday, it needs X, Y, Z. And it's kind of out of our price range, but this house is really good. It'd be great for the barbecues when the kids come over. And I'm like, mom, nobody has these conversations. This is not <laughs> a real, this is not a real show. Yeah, like it's like a si there. situational. We situate yeah. you into something, and how yes. do you react? That's the real part, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, they're wearing solid color pastel shirts. No one wears that. I mean, they're <laughs> being told what to say, what to wear, where to mm. sit. Okay, you're going to talk about house number one, and then you're going to segue into house number two into a 90 second conversation, and it's just not real. It's not the shows that George Vershore made in in seasons yeah. one, two, three, and four. But they were more but documentary. They they were documentary. But the one thing I like about it, is, <laughs> and, and following, you know, 20, 21 year olds lives and what they wanted yeah. to pursue and kind of this cool factor that MTV had. Um, I wanted to know if you think you got everything um, as far as the edit, did you get everything off your chest for the homecoming? But before I do that homecoming, <laughs> I, wa I, I, I wanted to ask you real quick. Only because I do watch the reality TV, John. So I've watched Tammy Roman and Basketball Wives many, many episodes. I want you've to wasted a lot of time. You've hey, a lot of no, no, life. she's she's the queen, John. She's the queen. She's the queen. Let me I, tell you something. I've lived with her twice. <laughs> I've lived with her twice. <laughs> okay, well nope. then that's that's Tammy the Roman. Like I know Tammy Roman. Well, that's the question. Um, were you able to spot her polarizing? personality and or when you see that she had such a career that she continued to have because now she's even on BET with the Miss Pat show um so she's done reality but she's also done scripted um did you kind of see that at the beginning I mean you're you're an 18 year old kid I mean was it a shock when you saw that Tammy just continued to um sort of excel in this yeah. industry no no I was not shocked um because um I even said on the real world, they asked me before we move out of the house, what can you, and it made it on the air. There's a clip of it. People are still circulating on Twitter. I think I retweeted it one day that I actually predicted Tammy's success in the entertainment business because they said to me, John, what do you think, you know, so-and-so is going to be doing? What do you think? So, and they got to Tammy, what do you think Tammy's going to be doing? I said, I can picture Tammy with uh, living, you know, with a bunch of girls who they all have attitude. And that's exactly what she ended up doing. It was, it was, it was, Do we knew that she went to tour? I think we, we, we lost you a little, John. No, a, a, a singer. Not a singer. Oh, can you hear John, me? Now? We, we lost you. What were you saying about her being a, a singer? Yeah, so I mean, she was no. a singer uh, back when we lived together. Uh oh, let me see. No, I think we're good. You there? Bear, bear okay. with us, everybody. Uh, we're talking about Tammy Roman. We're talking about the real world homecoming. And John's just kind of reflecting on like, you know, to, to see her at that young age and her continue to be a success. is kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. I mean, you knew she was going to be a go getter and, you know, she was a singer on the real world. Well, she's not a singer. Um, I mean, she even, she even was lip syncing when we were doing our showcase 
on the real world in 1993. I mean, she wasn't a singer. She just wanted to be in the entertainment business. And I don't even know if she saw herself as an actress um, back then. And now, now she's doing scripted, she's doing scripted shows and very little reality TV. As a matter of fact, when we did our homecoming, that was her comeback to reality yep. TV. Yep. So she'd been away from reality for so long. And uh, I'm going to step out on a limb here and say that she, she's still doing scripted, even when she's doing reality TV, it's very, it's very calculated. <laughs> yeah, she's good. Um, and I love Tammy dearly and she loves me too. But um, you know, there was a time on the homecoming where we had talked about the, the hallway incident, the David, the Tammy, the, the famous hallway incident where, you know, mm-hmm. eventually the girls didn't feel safe and David, you got to leave the house. And it was a big mess. And we, talked about it for two whole days at the homecoming. Uh, And then the very next day, okay, the very next day after all of that stress and tears and chaos and oh my goodness, uh, that was the second day of the homecoming. So the third day of the homecoming, they show this clip where in 1993, David and I get into a a little bit of an argument and I grab a basketball and go down and play basketball on the famous white men can't jump basketball courts. Okay. And uh, while I'm out of the house, you know, just cooling off. Uh, David goes to all of our roommates. This is on the show and says, you know what John asked me? Cause we weren't just roommates. We were, we, we weren't just housemates. We lived together in the same room. David and I did for about 12 days before we got kicked out. Mm, right. and, and, and so he said, he won't know. He, John asked me, do you know what he asked me? Got the whole, uh, everybody around the pool table. He asked me if he could hang up a Confederate flag in our bedroom. And I'm, you know, I didn't know he said that I wasn't there. I never did that. I never said that. And so when I watched that on TV, I'm like, he just told a pretty ugly lie about me. And so 29 years later, you you didn't know any of that during the filming, but you felt the reaction of something odd happening. Wow. No, I just, I saw it on TV. I saw it on TV and said, what? Uh, You know, I live in the South. I don't fly a Confederate flag. I don't like them when I see them. Okay. I think, I think, I think they're stupid. I think, I think there's Southern pride and I think there's Confederate flags and they don't, they don't mean the same thing. So um, I didn't ask him that. Well, when I finally tracked David down because uh, the network had said, can you help us find your roommate? We want to do this homecoming special. So I, I had to find David. And when I found him, we caught up and we talked and, Hey, how you been? And he said, John, if this, if this reunion homecoming thing happens, I gotta, I gotta clear something up. I said, Oh yeah. What? Like you and you and Tammy in the hallway, the blanket. He said, no, 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 no. I told a big fat lie on you. And I told everybody and the TV, you know, cameras that you had asked if you hang up a Confederate flag in our room and you, you never said that. I said, I know I never said that. Thanks a lot, jerk. And he said, I'm going to, I'm going to apologize and clear the air on our homecoming. I said, I'm going to let you. <laughs> so he did. And he told everybody at the homecoming that he never said that. And that was a vicious lie. And I looked right at him because I'm a pastor. I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I just said, David, thank you for clearing that up. Mm-hmm. But I give you grace. I forgive you. You've apologized. You've cleared the air and I forgive you. And that was it. There was no argument. Yeah. There was no, there was no half episode about the conversation. We dropped it. Tammy pulls me aside. Okay. Tammy pulls me aside. No cameras. We were on, I don't know. I mean, it's just different, just different. Now there were breaks at the homecoming. She said, so you just, you just going to forgive him like that. I'm like, yeah. I mean, he's been through a lot these last day and a half, I thought, you know what? He cleared the air. And she goes, you do know we're making a TV show, right? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I know we're making a TV show, but this is a reality show. And Tammy, I know you're not making reality shows anymore, but mm. this is who John Brennan is as a real person, like with integrity. When I look you in the eye and say, I forgive you, I forgive you. I'm not going to now have an argument with David over something that happened 29 years ago because we're making a television show. And I yeah. Um, okay, we got a little. Other stars. Yeah, you're trying to keep an authentic standpoint from what you do. Whereas some people do go on the show and they want to dress it up, or they feel compelled to dress it up, you know, to give something for the edit. It's a it's a confusing genre, you know. It could have some people well, lose themselves, and some people stay stay to their to their uh, principles. Before you get your next point, I wanted to tell everyone. Of course, if you want to uh, take a look at John Brennan's merch, of course, it's right here on the screen, johnbrennan.com. And of course, you can follow him on social media as well. Um, But we got to put that out because, you know, we're back in the limelight, man. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I appreciate that. Yeah. Sell sell, sell some shirts. (laughs) Sell sell my music and everything on my website. Um, Everything's changed. And so 
Uh, my music's there for download. If you're still an old dog like me, you want a CD, I'll autograph it and stick it in the mail to you. All that's on my website. But, um, you know, I, I really want to I really want to camp on this for a minute um, because it's one reason I really wanted to be on your podcast is um, is to talk about the authenticity of today's reality stars and um, how much that's changed and different uh, from who I am. And um, I think there's this pressure. Let me just say this. I know that there's this pressure when a camera is pointed at you to produce. I mean, if you if you look on social media and you see all of these uh, spoilers and stalkers and and big super fans, it's uh, okay, here's the show. And I hope that this person produces because I'm going to stand them. And it's like, I mean, do you really want them to produce inauthentic content for your entertainment? Or are you looking for a reality show and a reality personality participant that is real, true blue, genuine? Because um, I try to be true blue, genuine in real life. And so when I get on a reality show, whether it's an original series or whether it's a homecoming reunion, I'm going to be a true, I'm going to be a true dude. You meet me on the street. I'm going to be the same person that you see on the real world homecoming. Mm -hmm. And people say that all the time to all reality stars and really all people on TV. Hey, I feel like I know you. Well, when you look at John Brennan, you really do know me. Like I'm, I'm going to be this person. I'm the same person that I was in 1993 on the real world that I am on homecoming and same person that you'll meet on the street um, any day of the week. I don't say that about all of my roommates and I sure don't say that about the newer reality stars. I mean, I'm just going to, yeah. I'm, I'm, since I'm the only guest and no one besides you can interrupt me, I'm just going to say it plainly. <laughs> okay. These new reality stars are posers. All right. They are posers and they're riding on the coattails of people like me, the real OGs. And I know Mark Long has the OG all-stars, um, but I, I'll take it a step. And Mark, Mark's a very good friend of mine. I love him dearly. But you need to take the OGs a step back further because the OGs that are on the all-stars are just old. They're not OGs. If you want OGs, you better look at Eric Neese. You better look at John Brennan. You better go back to the very first challenge that ever existed, which was called the Road Rules All-Stars, and look at Eric, John, Rachel, Sean, and Cynthia. I mean, we started the challenge. It wasn't Johnny Bananas. It wasn't all of these people that are on there um, season after season after season after season until they win. And I love all those guys. I love some of the – I love very few of those people. But, <laughs> but I'm just <laughs> telling you, they're not OGs. They're not OGs. Mark Long, you're an OG because you were on the first road rules ever. And when they kick Puck out of the house – I think that he was one of the uh, candidates to be on uh, the San Francisco show. Um, I, I've even heard stories of a podcast he did recently where he was even being considered to, to live in our house as a second real world, which would have been awesome because I get along with Mark and I think he's a totally great dude. Mm -hmm. But Mark Long, if you're listening to my podcast here, 44 minutes into this <laughs> podcast, you don't have an OG challenge because you don't have me. And other than, you know, Wait, so you, Norman, you, want, to, you want to go back. Are you kidding me? I start, listen, I started road rules because <laughs> I was on the, the Winnebago with Tammy and Dominic. Okay. I started the challenge because I was on the very first challenge ever with Eric and, and Rachel and Sean and Cynthia. Okay. And I started the real world too, because I was on season two of the real world and season one completely sucked. So there's your sound bite. Okay. They have called me four times, three times for the all-stars challenge and haven't cast me yet. And uh, I, they I always tell them I'm available and willing and ready to go. But next now, time look you, at, now, next time, just tell them you're busy with Garth Brooks or something. Something well, about not being available is like the easiest way to get casted. It seems like. Oh, but um, listen, I'm telling you, I, uh, I I just think that nowadays when you put a camera on anybody. There's this pressure to produce. You got people that are that are bullying you online. Oh, don't you dare go on there and be boring. I mean, I got called boring on our homecoming. Oh, Tammy carried the homecoming. Mm -hmm. I don't think Tammy carried the homecoming. I think she dominated it. I do. I, I do. I do love Tammy though. So I'm gonna. Give, uh, I know. I can you, you know. You know. I just just because I've seen so many of her her, her shows, but that well, doesn't mean you know everyone has their different position. And what you're basically yeah. saying is, the concept is each person 
has to have their integrity with how they're going to run the situation. Are you going to turn it on for cameras? Are you going to keep it low key? John, I no, even no, deal with that. Uh, go, go ahead. I need to tell you something because my good friend, Mike Lewis, who I'm sure is watching, um, <laughs> he, he did a podcast with you, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so there's this, there's this little 10 second window of time where you say to Mike, now it just seemed like John on the homecoming really held back and he wasn't his true self. <laughs> and I thought, you know what I told Mike? Here's what I told Mike. I said, do you know that dude? Can you get in touch with him? He said, yeah, yeah, I can. And so, cause I've become good friends with Mike. He's a cool kid. Oh, good. And, uh, I, and I, and he said, yeah, I can get in touch with him. I said, tell him I want to be on his podcast. Cause I mm-hmm. I want to, I want to clear this up. Okay. So and yeah, I, set, set, set it straight. Go. Well, I want to say oh, here, I'll, this is, this is as honest as I can be. Yeah. When I went on that homecoming, I knew who was coming. I knew Tammy was going to be there. I knew David was going to be there. I knew that they were going to have two of our eight episodes about that whole hallway thing. I knew that everybody was going to be, you know, using the foulest language possible. I work at a church. I'm, 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 I'm a pastor of the gospel of Christ. Okay. And so I'm going to be careful about what I surround myself in. Now you, if you've watched the new Orleans homecoming, you know, when they I first have, told me yeah. new Orleans was going to be the next homecoming, I thought, I like all those people. Like they're friends of mine. I like, I like every single one of those people. Actually, it's going to be kind of boring. What are they going to do? They don't, mm-hmm. they're not going to fight about anything. And, uh, oh my, like, oh my goodness. Julie <laughs> is a very good friend of mine. Um, but you see Kelly remove herself completely yeah. from all of the antics. Let me just tell you something. Matt from the New Orleans show is a very good friend. All of them. All of them are, are I, I mean, I love, I, I talk to all of them. And uh, Kelly, I know probably the least, but I've messaged her back and forth and just said, hey, I can relate. Because when things got crazy and stupid on your show, you removed yourself. And people online called you boring. Mm-hmm. And people uh, online were like, oh, she's not producing. It's like, let me tell you something. She's a real person that has a real life she's going back to. She's not there to look like an idiot for yeah. your entertainment. And that's, that's where I was. And if you want to go back to the New York season, um, they had six episodes and three of them were about Becky and, and, and Kevin fighting about mm-hmm. race. I didn't want to watch that. I, I wanted to, I wanted to hear, I wanted Heather B to make me laugh. I wanted to know about Julie's family in Alabama. I wanted to know what Eric niece is up to. I didn't want to sit and watch Norman. Who's a very good friend of mine. Um, uh, I'm going to actually see him next week, uh, actually this week at Rachel, uh, Duffy's daughter's wedding. Uh, and so it's going to be, a, you want a real, a real, real world reunion. You should be with Norman and Rachel and I, uh, this, this <laughs> I like, coming weekend. I, I liked Norm. I thought he was great on, Norm. Uh, I thought he was great on the homecoming. Yeah. Um, because I, you know, these little nuggets, like he was saying he was struggling after the pandemic with some of the work experience and yeah. like, that's not the, anything that anyone puts out in public a lot. And yeah. the way the roommates, you know, bonded together. I think that's what yeah. it is. So, like, if you want to use the blanket word as a sto- uh, boring, that's going to be a tough word to get around because boring is such a polarizing word. But I think yeah. what it is is part of it is the genre itself. I, I've i often said that, you know, once once the shows went to Las Vegas this season, the real world kind of went away. It was still an interesting show. I mean, but- they're in the jacuzzi having sex before the other roommates show up to move in. And it does, and it doesn't say that that stuff can't happen on a season, but like that, that's the only thing that they're showing. I've often said, outside of like the DC season, all of those newer seasons weren't that much storytelling, and the DC season of the later seasons was the only one that I really, really liked uh, because yeah. it sort of went back to that. So to your point, let's get to it. No, it's basically like I could always have love and adoration because I think Tammy's a great reality star, and I've watched so much of her other shows. So that's just where that is. But the context too is. The concept of New Orleans, what I liked about it is all of the cast members like equally distributed because they were there wasn't anyone who was known as, you know, like the big Tammy Roman name. So I think you guys on some level had a little bit of a challenge because it may not be easy to film with her, with her experience, you know, and you knew her from all those years ago and she could be a bit of a dominating personality. So that did make it difficult. The other thing that made it difficult with you guys was (laughs) what each person had to (laughs) Well, no, but but you got to hear me. What each person had to lose. I'm hearing because you. if Tammy, you. if Tammy's in reality yeah. and reality only, or sorry, acting and music and all these things, she could just keep pushing because it's all great for her work in the industry. You can't really push as far as you want to go, um, 
because maybe the concept of the job and, you know, we're starting to see that we saw that in new Orleans. A lot of people didn't want to get as messy as they would have got in their twenties. And that's of course, understandable. Right. Yeah. Well, my, I mean, my, my, my critique, la, la, last word, last word, John, my critique with LA was as a viewer, I wish it would have been distributed more. So that doesn't say anything to John. That doesn't say anything to Tammy. That's just when we got the edit, we got so much of her and we, yeah. didn't, we didn't get a lot of everybody. There was times where I wanted to know more about like, well, how does John feel about this? And John, yeah. the hardest thing probably for us as a viewer to watch from you was when there was a lot of questioning or, you know, sort of prying too much into your personal business, which I guess they have every right to do in terms of they knew you as a virginal 18 year old. And that sort of became this tougher storyline. Was there anything that you felt painful about going through that experience or did you love the way you handled it or were you a little embarrassed by the situation or wish it didn't show up on television how'd you feel about that um what i felt was that was the first night and what i felt was honestly um i felt like that there was a lot of vulgarity um involved in the conversation which i'm you know i'm not going to use certain language and I don't really want to be on television around people using certain language. If they really wanted to know if I had um, remained sexually pure, then they could have asked me that differently. But what I really felt strange about was that I didn't ask any of them about their sexual experiences for the last 30 years. I didn't look at Tammy and say, which I, I felt like I, I could have yeah. after. Well, Tammy, before I answer your question, you tell me about all the sex you've had for 30 years in detail with every oh. partner and location. <laughs> and then I'll tell you about mine. I didn't do that. And the reason I didn't do that is because I afforded her respect that she did not afford me. Mm. And then TMZ wants to put it on there that John's 47 year old, 48 year old virgin. And they tweeted it out. So I tweeted him back. I said, why don't, and, and, and why don't you have me on your show? I'd love to talk to you about why I've remain sexually pure because of um, my ministry and because of the Lord's instructions in scripture. You don't want to talk about that TMZ. Yeah. They just want to talk about See, that's their- where, that's where the real world homecoming should have given us more because right now you're well, speaking to it. And yeah, it's like, it's, 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 it's like, we only saw the side of them getting on you and getting in your case, yeah, but you yeah. really didn't get to be uh, afforded Me. a rebuttal. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know? no. And, and, um, you know, like I said, they had it mapped out how they wanted the episodes to go and they all revolved around Tammy. Mm -hmm. And so when the producers, uh, not even of the production company, but when the producers of the network, okay, not even Paramount, but higher than Paramount at Viacom, Mm -hmm. um, say this, Tammy's going to be the star and Tammy's going to be the voice and Tammy's going to be the one that, you know, comes across looking good and has the mic all the time then, you know, no matter what you say and do, uh, you, you, you really don't get to have, you know, your point across. And yeah. that's how reality TV is different now. I mean, uh, Julie on the New Orleans show, who I'm very good friends with and talk to very often, um, she may not say this, but I'm going to say it for her. She felt pressure to produce, to not have a boring season. Well, to the point where, you know, there were times that she said and did things she wished she hadn't said and done. It made all the other roommates very uncomfortable to the mm-hmm. point where Kelly goes, I'm leaving. And Jamie mm-hmm. goes, wish she hadn't have said that. Uh, should I leave the Matt, <laughs> Matt, I actually called into the show. The producers mm-hmm. call, called me and said, John, do you know Matt Smith? I said, yes, I do very well. And uh, would you call him? Cause he's about to leave the show. And we think, Oh, I didn't know that. We oh, see that. So we see I that called, moment where he talks to a producer on one of the episodes, yeah. but not to the point where he was ready to walk. They called me and said, "Would you, as a fellow Christian, talk to Matt about why he should stay?" I called him on Facetime, and the and the camera crews are there. They have the footage. They just chose not to use it of John from season Los Angeles. His he was ready to go. They, and, you. John, okay. can you can can you repeat that? Because you we we lost you a little. Yeah. Yeah. So so they have footage of me on FaceTime calling Matt while he's at the New Orleans homecoming. It's just telling him, "Hey, Matt, you need to stay there, man. You're, you're the conservative voice. You're the Christian voice with this side of morals. You can't leave. Don't you? Don't you leave? Then there's nobody with your point of view. 
and uh, and and so they had that 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 footage they could have used. I called back again. I called back again because Julie on the first um, homecoming, she's like, you know, screw every. She said, f every other season except for New York in the real world. We were first. We're in the best city. Forget all mm-hmm. you guys. And we're like, so then we saw that. So when we got in the confessional, we did this big. You know, oh New York, you suck, and we're the best. And yeah. you know, Eric Eric Nice wasn't even at your homecoming; he was at ours. You know, and so uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, we're talking smack. So they wanted to keep the rivalry going. So they had mm-hmm. me call again and talk to the cast on speakerphone. And I'm like, yeah, your all's homecoming's probably boring because everybody's so nice, and you guys probably didn't fuss or fight at all. And they're like, oh, wait till you see the show. Yeah, and then it was they all, unbelievable, unbelievable uh, it, season. I mean, it was unbelievable, but and I love the cast members and I love the producers and I love the show to be on not bashing mm. something. I was par- fabricated, fabricated mm. reality TV. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, new Orleans. I know you're up for some awards, go win them, <laughs> whatever. Cause I'm a real world proponent. I want to, you know, mm. I, I, I like the project. I like being part of it. I would do it again right now. The phone rang. They said homecoming or real world experience. We want John Brennan. I'd be there. I wouldn't even have to think about it. So I'm a proponent of it. I love it. I'm a supporter. But the New Orleans homecoming was fabricated. It was not real. And when Becky from the New York season grabbed her suitcase and said, I'm leaving your reality show. This is not real life. At the time when I watched it before our homecoming, I was like, come on, Becky, don't leave. What are you doing? What do you mean it's not real? You, you're, you're the OG. You're a, a pioneer of reality TV. You know what this is. I can relate. I know exactly. I even, I even sent her a, a DM and I said, I didn't realize it at the time, but I fully support you. I know exactly what you meant and I support you. And it's a totally different experience now than we were on. It not even resembles the same. Yeah. So when you say to Mike Lewis, I felt like John was holding back. Mm-hmm. I wasn't holding back. Let me say it to you plainly to everyone listening <laughs> on your podcast, all of your subscribers and followers. Give it to me, John. Let's go. I wasn't holding back. I was trying not to look like an idiot on TV. And I yeah. had four other roommates that looked like complete imbeciles on television. I wasn't there to look stupid. I wasn't there to look the way Tammy made herself look. Sorry, I wasn't. I wasn't there to make myself look the way David made himself look. That's not the reason I went to the homecoming. I went to see my friends, to have an update. I went to have a reunion. I went to get back on TV because I'll be honest, quite frankly, reality stars like the attention of being on TV. But when you point a camera at somebody, there's this there's this this feeling of oh, I got to produce. I can't be boring. People on Twitter are going to say I'm boring. Oh, my. Yeah, I don't care. I and, was so, and social media was a thing that wasn't even in your first season. Now right. it is. It, now it, it, is. It, could, it could tear down people's, you know, you want to you want to sell and market your music. But all of a sudden you have this scene that sticks with you. It's like Twitter yeah. kind of dominates that. So there is a little bit of a fine line. Hey, listen, oh, yeah. I. I understand it. Like there was a TLC episode, a reality show that I did once, just a one-off episode. And of course I did Fuse TV's VJ search. That was a 20 episode series. Like I've done some stuff in front of the camera and I, yeah. I do see the change and I, I do sometimes not like it. I yeah. do understand the concept of you've got, you got to play ball um, sometimes, or you have to stick to your integrity. When I did the TLC episode, <laughs> It went so far off from what the original conversation was that even what you saw, I'd have friends call me. They were like, Ronnie, we knew you were in radio, but are you an actor too? Because yeah. they literally were like, it was just so far off. And yeah. I did the episode because a, they paid my rent that month and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and because uh, I thought it would be further reality television experience for me as a radio yeah. host. I thought that worked, but I mean, if you don't say no to something, they will, you know, kind of, you know, put dirt on your name in some, some ways, uh, I guess is what you're trying to say. And, and in real life and in real life, if you don't say or do something and it displeases somebody, let's face it. We're like, so what? I don't Mm -hmm. care what you think, but when you don't or do say or do something on. Did we lose them again? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, are you I was t- I was telling everyone it's there? a great time to to comment, you, subscribe, and 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 like this amazing podcast. I'd like to say this is John's favorite podcast from this point on. He says I want to talk to that Ronnie guy. <laughs> well, I'm here. <laughs> I do. I just I just think that that when there's a camera pointed at you, 
um, you say and do things that don't necessarily, I mean, in real life, if, if, if you make somebody mad, you're like, I don't care what you think about me. But when there's a, you're on a reality show and oh my goodness, Twitter's going to talk about me. And, and, and I'll tell you who can relate best to this <laughs> is my dear friend, Beth, Beth, because <laughs> she worries a lot about what people on Twitter are going to say. John, mm. David called me a Karen. I'm like, so what? Sticks or stones? I mean, yeah. so what? I don't want people on Twitter calling me Karen. I'm like, then. Don't look at Twitter because, I mean, nobody on Twitter is going to be nice to you. And then nobody on Twitter is going to be nice to me. And so, you know, yeah. there's this whole pressure on reality shows. I hate even calling them reality shows because it's turned into something different. But, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I like being on them. I mean, I like being on them. <laughs> well, I we thought got... I saw you tweet. There was a New Orleans tweet. And then I think on the top of that tweet, you put, um, I would do it again. But then you put, like, different different, with different, different people. people. What, do you, would do what, it... do you, what are you saying there, John? What I'm saying is I want to live in a house again, but I don't want to live with my roommates. I want to live with different roommates. I would yeah. live with the New Orleans cast. Like you've I done it. Go, al you've done it already. Yeah. You've already oh, I've done it twice. exhausted that I've experience. Done, I've done it twice. My yeah. days living with Tammy and, and David are, are over. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, well, but if you want, if I, if yeah. you want me to live with, uh, with Tokyo and, 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 and Matt, I'd love to do that. <laughs> I'd love yeah. to, you know, I'd love to hang out with Heather B and Eric. But, have you um, got any rumblings from Paramount Plus or like, you know, just from your your circle of friends who are all doing these shows? Um, it seemed like the first three real world, um, I'm sorry, challenge all stars came out real quick, as did the first real world homecomings. But now we haven't really heard much about what's the next step. Has anybody been contacted? Do you know anything about that? Well, I don't know if you realize this, but I'm not really in the loop. <laughs> sure you are. Come on. I'm really not. I'm really not. Um, <laughs> I, I hear rumblings of, of things, but I think we're at the point right now with the homecomings where the network is saying, okay, we've done three homecomings. Um, you know, Paramount Plus was brand new when, when the first uh, homecoming mm -hmm. came out. So they needed some original content. And, um, you know, they've got three series of the uh, homecoming i think they're at the point where they're going did we make money here was this a success um should we make more of these or move on to some i don't think that they i, I think that buna murray the production company is probably sitting on go and uh they are uh are you there they're ready yeah. to make more home i think they're ready to make more homecomings when 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 paramount plus says we're you know we're ready to purchase it and buy it and, and go make more so but, who, would um, you, who would you like to see? I talked to Cyrus was an interview I did. He seems well, going to know about it. Um, yeah. And I don't think that a full homecoming was going to happen for Boston because they have some unwilling participants, um, some of which I'm extremely yeah, I, good friends with. But yeah. uh, that the problem is getting 100 percent participation with all the cast, because there are some 40 and 50 year olds that don't want to be on this, you know, the show anymore. I had two of my roommates, Dominic and Aaron, that didn't come and there was no way in the world they were going to come. Yeah. Luckily we had replaced two roommates. So we still had seven. And like we discussed earlier, they had Tammy and they already knew the whole show was going to revolve around Tammy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was going to be a John update. Yeah. There was going to be a, you know, this and a that, but let's face it. The LA homecoming was all about Tammy and yeah. to their detriment, to be honest with you, to be a thousand percent honest, um, it was too much, Tammy. And well, what, Tammy. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. And that's what I said when you're talking about what you heard on the podcast I was speaking on. I love Tammy as a reality star, but what I'm saying is if it's an uneven situation where like, is it John's holding back? Like if I'm requiring myself to ask that question, it's because the show itself isn't giving yeah. enough balance. I felt like you guys were sitting in the same room. It was, if the room felt boring, <laughs> like it just, no one walked around the house. Like it was just, a, it was just maybe like you say, that contrived thing, sit right here, watch the video monitor and boom, let's see who's going to be the, you know, the most vocal in this situation. So yeah. it was a little bit of everything for me with Venice. I didn't, I, I mean, it's harder to do, but I would have loved to see more walk and talks. You're so close to Venice beach. Like they wouldn't it, let us, we couldn't, we couldn't leave the house because of COVID. Oh, really? Okay. There were so many restrictions about television production. Yeah, because it was right in COVID times. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, we wanted to do that out on the beach, which was 100 yards from our house. We wanted to do it in the Pacific Ocean. Say it again. We, we, lo we lost you a little bit right there. Yeah, we, we wanted to do it in the beach right outside of our house. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but they wouldn't let us because there it was you, you had to have a permit and they weren't granting permits for any beach production. And, you know, 
they, you know, they want to break the rule. And, and, and so we did it in the hot tub at our loft. No. And can you imagine at a homecoming, can you imagine where 30 years later, one of the housemates, okay, that was pretty, pretty dominant member of the original <laughs> series became a pastor. Okay. And then one of the roommates who was the second homosexual to ever be on a reality show. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first lesbian to ever be on a reality show decided that she is now a Christ follower, goes to church every week. And she wanted her roommate from the real world to baptize her. Mm. And so you're talking about Beth, the, Beth A. Yeah. Beth A. In the house at the homecoming, the same house we lived in, the, not the same jacuzzi, but in the same spot where the jacuzzi once was, a new jacuzzi, all of the roommates and the camera crew come out there for a baptism at our 30-year homecoming reunion. And John baptizes Beth A. Mm. And it doesn't get on the show. That's funny. When you were saying it that, I was like, I watched it. get on the show. They posted it on Facebook because we were mm -hmm. so pissed. But it did not make the. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Now, I called the gentleman that we spoke of earlier that made the, the with the integrity of, of the way that the real world was shot in the first four, four, first four seasons of the real world, New York, L.A., San Francisco and London. And I said it just the way that I can you imagine a scenario where 30 years later, a pastor that would lived in the house, baptized the lesbian that lived in the house yeah, at the homecoming reunion and it didn't get aired. Can you imagine that? It didn't make the eight episode series. Why? Because Tammy and David had to follow each other around the house for four episodes fighting and fussing. So when you say, I like Tammy as a reality star, listen, randomly, Ronnie, I love you, but Tammy's not a reality <laughs> star. She's not a reality star. She's a scripted star, even when she's on a reality show. John, I mean, I know how it works. I'm <laughs> telling you. No. I, so what you got to understand, you, you, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to compartmentalize the difference between it's hard for me to turn off my, my um, uh, excitement for her because I've, I've watched so many seasons of other reality shows she's done. So, yeah. we, but, but I, I think that's where it all started. That's what I put well, into the, that's what I put into the universe was saying like, cause people would ask, do you like real world homecoming New York? Do you like um, the LA season or do you like new Orleans? And I loved the New York and I love the new Orleans, but the LA one felt heavy to me or, or like yeah. not heavy, but off balance. Like, um, you know, when you guys had that scene where you were walking to the restaurant that you went to, I was yeah. like, finally, they get to go outside. Yeah. Just, and that was the last day. That yeah. was the very last day. Yeah. And, so I think and, two things could exist. I could like from my years of seeing the funny stuff she's done. And do I think she put it on? Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a radio host. I, you know, I'm as authentic as they get probably why my career is not you know, having viral moments because I keep it authentic, but I know how to put yeah. on a show too. So, and yeah. I think you do too. We all sort of yeah. do. And no, 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 no one talking about Tammy is to make John feel lesser than, you know, that's not well. the point. And actually I should say, I do love where you're at in terms of your regenerating this moment for the, for, for good and for the next level, because, um, and you could comment however you need to, but what I really liked is you going out on a limb and tweeting and Instagramming saying, you know, it's not over yet. And you're starting to put manifestations of things you want. So, you know, when you look, when you think of the Grand Ole Opry, that's as big as it gets. And, and you're yeah. putting it in the universe now stating, I want this opportunity. That's right. I got to tell you, John, I'm a little more timid when I, like if it's with my friends and family, this is my dream, da 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 da. But I yeah. don't know that I'm that good to put it online and tell everybody because once you put it out there, you're responsible for achieving it. Yeah. So tell me about this yeah. this, this new want and need that you have that you're like I'm not well, done. Well, here's the, yeah, I'm not done. <laughs> uh, I, I ain't done singing. Yeah, I mean, I was put on the real world as an 18 year old because I was a country music singer. I wasn't put on the real world because I had aspirations to be a reality star. It's been 30 years and I still want to sing country music on the Grand Ole Opry. That was always my goal. So when people say, hey, uh, I feel like I know you are, you know, I feel like um, I'm with you in this journey. Yeah, because of the authenticity of what my goals have remained. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, 
there is this I did I did I put it out there to have to add some pressure. Hey, I, I want I want your support, but I want to I want to achieve this for me. And um, you know, for me, I mean, for me, I I don't really want to be a TV star. But you said something a minute ago. You said I haven't really had viral moments because um, I'm I, I I've kept it off authentic. Is what and, you I, and I and I stand by that. Yeah, and, and, I've and chosen. Let, go ahead, go ahead. I do too. I'm saying that's me also. Mm-hmm. I don't have the viral moments that you know Julie and Melissa had on the New Orleans Real World. I didn't have that uh, at my homecoming. Why? I don't have those viral moments because I kept it authentic too. Like Tammy pulling me aside and saying, "You do know we're making a TV show." Yeah, but I'm making an an authentic TV show. And while you're having a hard time turning off your affinity for Tammy, I'm completely over it. <laughs> like <laughs> like I've lived with her twice and I'm yeah. unimpressed at this point. But it's cool. You know, I love Tammy. I'll text her today yeah. and say, "Hey, I, I talked about you on this podcast." And, yeah, say and, say say the host can't stop talking about you. The host <laughs> I love loves Tammy. You. As now, a viewer John, though, on it's the other different. Hand, was holding back and boring, <laughs> but but you know what? But that that I, I, you know what? When things got crazy in the homecoming, I did I did hold back. And here's the reason: I'm 48 years old. Um, you know, Beth is wow. Yeah, you... Beth is 52 years old. Irene is 53 years old. Uh, Dominic refused to come back on the show because he's 52 years old. Not everybody wants to sit at the table and watch Tammy and Do- uh, or Tammy and David fight. Like, like we're 50 something. We're not 20 something. Yeah. And that's what I saw happening at the New Orleans homecoming. It's like Kelly was like, whoa, like I'm a full grown adult with a husband and children. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not I'm not going to well, well, the, spe- the, the drag club. <laughs> John, speaking of uh, and I a drag club is totally fun and fine. Um, I, I've, <laughs> For I've some been people. To, I've been For to many. <laughs> but, but, but but sans that point, the point of uh, what's her name? Uh, Kelly on New Orleans. I speaking to the point of boring. I didn't think for one second she was quote unquote boring because she wanted to leave. I was more like if I'm a cast member and I got my boundaries and I got somebody who's going to maybe cross those boundaries and that's not necessarily judging Julie, although she was bringing it pretty heavily. Like (laughs) I'm leaving because I'm not the 20 year old. Like I think of someone like Melissa specifically, Melissa was an icon when she did this, you know, the first time, but now she's got three daughters looking to, you know, uh, you know, looking up to her and, and raising them. And she's got a beautiful family, husband, a beautiful life. You don't want to do something on some show that yes, Paramount plus pays a little, but like long-term, you don't want to ruin your stuff. And I thought for you, it might've been your career is very much in a place that you can't have people looking at you crazy, you know? Um, now, now I do want to yeah. knock, I do want to knock one thing. Uh, if you have a viral moment because it happens naturally, that's okay. So I don't want to make it like everybody who had a viral moment is um it's not like of, you're doing the, the wrestling one two three count when someone's pulling a blanket off of the <laughs> the roommate in the hallway not that kind of viral wwe one two three count you do like the wwe i heard you talk about mike on the mike lewis podcast you like the wwe I love quite, it. I love it. quite a bit well i hope wherever you want to go um does happen and um it, it, it allotted for this interview i think the similarities we have are again you know i know how to do radio in a way that i couldn't you know, do a phony viral moment. I could turn it on and let me tell you something, John, but it's just not what I want to do. Now, do you like everything that I do broadcast wise? I don't know, but I'm also going to tell you, oh, well, this is why these things happen. You know, I can't watch 10 seasons of Tammy on Basketball Wives and then not, you know, remember all the funny things and the humor that she brings to the television. But I could also respect your opinion that it maybe was hurtful that you felt that I stated Oh, John wasn't no. bringing it, you know. No, it wasn't hurtful. It just it just made me want to say to viewers um, that not everybody that goes on these homecomings or not everybody that goes on a reality show, it's not just this fear of, oh, what's Twitter going to call me? It's it's not everybody's there to act like an idiot. Yeah. Like there there are some people that aren't really necessarily holding back, but they might have a moral among Mm-hmm. Yeah, morally, yeah, exactly. And, and and it's just like, I mean, it's just how he's, you know, acts like, you know, they they live in a frat house. And when you're 50 <laughs> years old, 
You, you don't mm-hmm. you don't act like you're on the real world Las Vegas. You just don't. And if you do, something's yeah. real bad wrong with you. And uh, <laughs> but you know, maybe I, maybe I, I mean, let's call it what it is. Something's real bad wrong with you. But it makes good TV. And I think that's why people like watching these reality shows is they can sit there and go. Sometimes I'm an idiot, but I'm not that kind of idiot. And those people are really, really disturbed. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I'm I'm wanting to be on the Challenge All-Stars 4 or 5 or 6. I now, hope I'm you not, get it. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to take steroids and look like those other contestants. I'm going to look no. like John. <laughs> yeah. All right? I'm not going to get on there and try to, you know, go to bed with, you know, Anissa or whoever's on the show time after time after time after time after time. Yeah. But when they're looking for new, real OGs, there are several out there that, that, you know, we can do it. But, you know, I, I just, you know, reality has changed so much. And yeah. uh, I hesitate with, you know, we, <laughs> a little less time watching basketball wise, Ronnie. <laughs> I mean, I didn't watch it in one sitting, John. I watched it over the years. I saw the progression of her. I thought she was very funny. I thought, hey, she should get a talk show one day. I look at it from a different place. I look at it from like the Bethany Frankel's, I don't know how familiar you are with that housewife, but the housewives who make a career out of it and, and create a brand yeah. and, and sort of parlay it. And, and that for the record, that's another, that's one of the reasons I liked Tammy was I was like, wow, maybe there's a talk show host in here, you know, from her emerging. So it was a little bit of that, but no, no, I, I'm not putting my views on how she handled herself on homecoming. I knew exactly what I would be getting from her. You know um, what I didn't know is how everyone else would be reacting. And uh, yeah. honestly, that's a little bit of pressure. You know, you have one person who's dominated the space and has all that experience. The rest of you guys are kind of coming back into it. I could see how that'd be well, challenging. Yeah. Dominated is dominated is a good word for it. You want me to tell you, um, you want me to tell you what's, what's more entertaining and enjoyable to be around than, than Tammy on a reality show. Uh, okay. Bring it. Let's go. Tammy, when she's not on a reality show, Tammy, when she's not on camera is really awesome and fun to be around. I bet. The, yeah. I mean, honestly, when the pressure's off and you don't have to say anything for the record and you're not playing a role and you're not, you know, capturing uh, one liners for whatever T- Tammy, when she's laughing and she's um, not on okay is is really fun to be around but that's true with david it's true with uh most all of the challenge people that i see on the challenge over and over and over and over and over again uh yeah like let's just let's just put these people on until they and i love Darrell, but has he done a hundred seasons of the challenge yeah there was a there was a run there where veronica she hasn't been on it recently until All Stars three, but mm-hmm. she was on for countless seasons over and and Anissa, uh, Anissa yeah. has that podcast with Tori now. Um, yeah, How I, I mean, I, I I hope with Paramount, <laughs> I hope with Paramount Plus they could find different ideas, different shows. You know, they could do a uh, real world um, kind of like a, what Jersey Shore has the family vacation. They should get some real worlders that weren't in the same season but in the same genre. The Cyrus's, yes. the Johns, the people yes. from like the first 10, let's say, first 10 seasons yes. and then put them on a little road trip. That's here, here, me. Here, would be here's, the, here's the idea. I'm going to let it out on I'm going to let the cat out of the bag <laughs> right here. This is my idea and I'm sure everybody's had the idea so it's not that novel but here's what they should do, okay? The way that they've done the the challenge all stars, they should do the real world legends, the real world icons, the real world all stars. Exactly how you said, take John and Beth and Heather B and Cyrus, who's one of the coolest people I know. Okay, take ten real worlders from all different seasons and put them in a house for four months. Okay, do the real world with a mashup cast. Okay, Mm -hmm. now you got to have at least one cowboy. And I don't know who this Jordan guy is wearing a cowboy hat on the challenge, but I did it first. All right, bruh. <laughs> he's, 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 he's talented, though. Whatever. He's, he's talented. Listen, I was John, making reality John, TV John. shows when these people <laughs> were still in diapers, okay? <laughs> John, they weren't even born at that. At the, they weren't at even that born. Stage. Okay. That's I'm 41. I was born. I was a 12 year old, but they were not born. <laughs> No, that so would they're be... not an OG. So they're not an OG. Yeah, okay? that would so, be good. Mix, super nice those... guy, whatever. Big mm-hmm. muscles and pecs, blah, 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 blah. Okay, mm-hmm. but let me tell you. <laughs> oh, boy. John, say that again. We, we lost you. Uh... I said if, if they did a mashup 
uh, real world, like I just described, like like a la the Challenge All Stars, like two people from each cast and put like maybe ten or twelve of them of, in a house and did the real world the way the real world used to be, yeah, with a, an all star cast of of the real world. Now I'm not talking about Johnny Bananas, okay? I'm not t- talking about all these posers that are on every challenge they've ever had. Apparently, you can stay on the show until you win the big money. I'm talking about people that the, the fans would really want to see. Now, you won't get Tammy, all right? Tammy's, yeah. you know, doing her scripted stuff. She's on BET and Apple TV, and she's doing, you know. But if you got Cyrus, if you got, you know, Heather B or Eric Neese or Julie from the New York uh, the, the New Norm York Norm would even be good, yeah. yeah. Norm would be awesome. Uh, if you got John Brennan back on the screen, who's going to be authentic and not make up things just because there's a camera pointed at you. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be good. I think, I think some, be... someone like Judd on season three would be good, too. I love Judd. Judd you know, here's the thing about cool. why I like your idea for two reasons. Um, I, as I get older, um, I appreciate being able to have, like, you don't really see people on television at a certain age. You know, everything's geared to, you know, that demographic, that young, young, young demographic. And I think Paramount Plus did something so well, and I hope that they calculate that in their decision-making process that people didn't watch the homecoming just because it was another show. They watched it because we grew up with these people and we want to see life as a 45 year old, as a 50 year old, as a 52 year old, we don't get to see that anywhere. Every love story is a 20, 26 year old, you know, on, on television, uh, every novel, the same thing. And I, 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 I caught it quite refreshing as a 41 year old, as a 12 year old, when the original real world came out that you guys are, were like friends in our head. When we watched it originally, you guys were like the older, yeah. cooler uh, cousin or something like that. Um, so yeah. I of course want to see what navigating life in life is at 50 years old. Some might be perfect, uh, perfect um, two car garage, you know, mom, pop 2.5 kids, white picket fence. Others might be, you know, divorce and starting life over again. I think it would be great to have some of you older original. We won't call them OGs per se. Like you say, that word gets mixed up. We'll call yeah. them the originals, the real world originals and have them They're travel. the pioneers. Yeah, yeah, because those stories will make sense because those stories haven't been on television. You know, you guys have stories of the, the you are the older generation. You know, you, you've sadly lost your father. Like real life shit. No, sorry, not to curse. Real life stuff. I got passionate. <laughs> real life things that happen. So I think that would be good. Um, I yeah. could go on with you forever and ever. And I like that idea. <laughs> but I do have a questionnaire here we're going to do. It's going to be called okay. and then we'll be done. Because um, we, we just we keep talking. <laughs> um, our reception is bad, but we keep talking. So this is called real world superlative. So you just have to say from... The first one to ten seasons, unless oh. there's somebody past Vegas, I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, what was it? New York, San Diego. You could choose whoever you want, but basically the originals. Who was the life of the party, if, if you could think of first person on the top of your mind for real world? Heather B. Oh, that's a good one. That's a great Heather one. B. New York, one of the best reality stars that's ever been cast, period. I must say, when you talk about uh, when we talk about authentic stories, Heather B's homecoming and her getting to talk about her father. Yeah. That episode was good television. It was more of that, t- more of that and less of Becky and Kevin fighting about racism would have been nice. Right. Yeah. But I'm just, I, I, I remember feeling like I, I, you just <clears throat> flash back. You really do. You flash back to Heather, young Heather. You forget. Cause I've been, you know, I see her on the radio show and all that stuff, but you're just like, the way it was told, that's good storytelling. So, yes, more, yep. more of that, absolutely. Um, all right, so we best storyteller from uh, Real World. So this is our Real World Superlatives with uh, John Brennan from Real World Los Angeles and The Homecoming and a country music superstar. <laughs> well, one day. Oh, man, I hate to say best storyteller would be Heather B also. So let me think of a second <laughs> one, but she, she can tell a good story. I'm a okay. big Heather B fan. I just yeah. love her. Yeah. Uh, let me think. Let me think. You know who I love, who I really, really love that never gets mentioned. The whole season doesn't get mentioned much, but Sharon from London. Oh, uh, yes. She yes. is one of the most yes. awesome people. And I love to hear her talk. So I'm going to say best storyteller, Sharon from London. When the pandemic happened and Paramount Plus was a new thing and they had the first four seasons and then sadly they didn't have like five through 12 or whatever. Um I remember going and doing a rewatch of London and just being like, 
wait, was this supposed to be like a, a uneventful season? Because I totally don't think it was uneventful. It had a great group of people. No. Um, yeah. It was a great show. It just didn't get very good ratings. But uh, Lars, I love Lars on the London show. Yeah. And uh, and and Sharon, uh, really great people on that show. What's that? Cat, Jacinda. It's a, it's a just Jacinda, a uh, yeah. Jay, and Mike. Yeah, it was a great cast. I mean, I, I definitely agree. Um, okay, so biggest flirt, Trishel, Trishel Vegas, Trishel Vegas. Okay, uh, best dressed, Dominic. My season, Dominic. <laughs> You know the fans probably miss Dominic the most. Not taking anything away from Aaron, but not having Dominic on your season was on the homecoming was a challenge for the fan base. You know that, right? Well, I do know that, and it almost cost us. They almost skipped us, to be honest with you, because Dominic wouldn't participate. But you know, here this is really selfish. But I get to talk to Dominic whenever I want to. Like mm -hmm. I, I've been in touch with him a lot lately. And uh, we actually had dinner with them before we all left Los Angeles and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Aaron too, they all came and they're oh, like, great. Hey, we just don't want any cameras. Like we don't want part of the show. And then when we told them what our homecoming was like, they looked at each other and went, see, we made a good decision. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. So they were all they, at the same dinner. How many people are at that dinner? Uh, like everybody except for David and, and Beth with Beth was sick. Okay. So, and, and Tammy, Tammy was not there, but everybody else was there. And we even took a picture, but they're like, Hey, we're not on social media. Please don't post this picture. Oh, that's and, good. And so long story short is I still got Dominic in my life. Like yeah. he still makes me laugh. I still, I know the fans don't and the viewers want to see him. And I'll just tell the viewers, he's the exact same funny, awesome guy that he was <laughs> back in the day. So, he I mean, yeah, so, he had so he, many, so many opinions. So fun. Yeah, so opinions, yes, but never has anyone been on the real world without being opinionated. But just, very yeah. funny, just just a funny guy. I mean, unforgettable person. Like, I'm really thankful for him as a friend because for all the reasons you know. I mean, he's Dominic. Yeah. He's just so. So, yeah, I mean, I know they miss him, but I still get to talk to him. So um, I don't miss very him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was the that was the one big punch for that show. Uh, Aaron would have been great too, but you know, people like you say they get to a certain age, don't want to revisit it, and you can't you can't make people um, most likely to write the next hit song. Um, that's going to be a tie between John Brennan and Tokyo Parker. <laughs> yeah, that was so good for Tokyo to have this new um, look on that experience. That was probably you know sort of you know, where they were laughing at him the first season, not they, the cast, but every single people. cast member of the new Orleans show, except for Jamie and Kelly, um, called me, uh, before they went to their homecoming. What's it mm. like? Is this, is this a good thing? Should I do it? What happens here? How's this work? And, and I mean, I talked to all of them at length and I, I had talked to, uh, you know, I still in my head call him David, but Tokyo and, mm. and, um, yeah, I mean, I'm pulling for all those guys. Like, there's this small club of people that know what it's like. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I love those New Orleans people, all of them. The thing that got me about, well, David, Tokyo, is the people that are coming up now don't realize how doing a show, and if it doesn't go the way that maybe you need it to go, you can lose opportunity within the creative yeah. fields. You can, you know, that, that opportunity for a record deal can sort of be taken away because of the embarrassment, yep. even if it's not your doing, but it was, it was edited that way. Nowadays, people don't really get that. They'll go on a reality show. They'll show it all. <laughs> and then they know that they could take to TikTok and still be a TikTok star and, you know, brand endorsement well, deals. And yeah. And, and I mean, to be honest, uh, people would rather be a reality star than a singer or actor anymore. I mean, and that's some, true for some people now that it's grown so much and it's become entertainment and it's not going anywhere. The goal is real. It used to be reality stars were using it as a springboard to something else. Now the goal is to be a reality star. Yeah. I always thought more reality shows now, even if you're going to be less authentic and less documentary style, they should still be following artists. They should still be following actors. They should still be following the gal who was married and now she's 32 and she's single again, and she's like, you know, oh gosh, I'm gonna refollow my music dreams. Like, I just don't understand how they're just casting TikTok people who are gorgeous or something like that. Um, nonetheless, well, I mean, I mean, let's face it, we know the reason that I've not been cast on on the challenge. <laughs> What's that? Or more, and everything on there is, is I. 
Okay? I don't look like yes. I don't look like MJ. I just look like John. And it's not eye candy. This is all you get. Okay. I mean, <laughs> everything is so shallow in the world today where if you're not this beautiful sculpted body and face, then, you know, you don't get chosen. And uh, I guess that's who I was in the 90s. I must have been this gorgeous young man or something. But, um, you know, no, you time look like, has changed. You look like regular people. You look like a regular yeah. human. So it does suck. Um, moving along. <laughs> oh, did you answer the question? Most likely yeah. to write it. That, was that John Brennan and who? Tokyo. We're going to collaborate. Okay, good. And, I like uh, that. Yeah, we're going to collaborate on uh, Come On Be My Baby Tonight because I ain't done singing yet. <laughs> um, okay, most likely to win the lottery and then lose the ticket. Oh, no doubt. David Edwards. David Edwards, yes. My roommate. Oh, he would definitely lose the ticket. Okay, so he'd be lucky and then unlucky so so soon. Um, most likely to travel the world. Uh, I'm going to say Rachel, San Francisco Rachel. She's okay. been tra well traveled. I've I've been uh I've been to Hong Kong and Africa and New Zealand and Australia and Papua New Guinea myself. So I'm pretty I'm pretty well traveled. That boy that never left Kentucky has been well traveled now. Watch out now. <laughs> um, the next one is the best one liners or sound bites. Dominic uh, or Melissa from New Orleans. Um, yeah, Melissa had a really good New Orleans. Uh, she's witty second season and she felt it felt like she was holding like her boundaries you know because not to you know go that harsh or, or you know just i don't know what you would describe it as but to really like hold to her own you know set of boundaries and um but still to manage to be so funny you're right yeah that's how you make good reality tv i don't know why it needs to be like an argument a hundred times uh, out of the day but it is what it is uh that's a good one she does have some good one-liners Biggest drama king or queen? Oh, let me think. That's gonna be not very tough at all. Beth, that's oh. my roommate, Beth, from season <laughs> two, Los Angeles drama queen. And you know, it's funny how it carries on to Beth on the the real world and the real world homecoming is different than Beth on the challenge. Have you noticed that Beth on the challenge is just you know putting the screws to everybody and and mm -hmm. and and full of. Uh, turmoil i call it. <laughs> yeah she she made she made a rumor this season that i was like oh you can't make that rumor beth now <laughs> you can't now what now 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 was it a rumor i mean i don't it, know yeah it, this don't call it a rumor especially when production's whispering in your ear and saying hey this is uh this is happening we need you to bring it up and that's how reality tv has changed now yeah. you have a producer in your ear off camera saying what I need you to do is walk over to that group of people and say this about that other castmate. And yeah. it's like, you really want me to say that? Yes. There's this pressure to say, you know, rumors, uh, true rumors, true story, <laughs> true story rumors. And, you, do you uh, know there's a podcast, the the Dave Holmes podcast that uses that that name, true story? I the saw way you say it. And I, I, I even tweet. It's the way, fantastic. Yeah, the way I say it. The yeah, true well, and then the he won't. Stow Ray. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, refer to he, you all he, the time. Yeah, they, they won't return my tweet and they won't have me on. So, you know, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, I listened I, I mean, listened to the full uh for, for quite a bit. I listened to a lot of it. I don't know if they're currently doing it anymore. It might be an older, older series, but they literally named it after you or after yeah, your well, after your verbiage of true stow ray and Bill. Well, I'm pretty I'm, Beth, I'm pretty easy to find. You know, here's a backstory to the uh, the Beth. Uh, it's B E F. Okay, so I'm always always mocking my roommate David because we would be on the first floor and Beth would be primping on the third floor and we'd be ready to go somewhere. And instead of going, "Hey Beth," he would go, "Beth, Beth, come down here, we're ready to go." And so when we kicked him out of the house, we're waiting for Beth again. David wasn't there anymore, so I had to fill in, and I went, Beth! And everybody's like, oh, my gosh, that sounds just like David. And so for the yeah. rest of the season, I was saying Beth. But now on the true story, uh, we were doing an interview, and they said, okay, so we want you to, in your most nasally, twangy country music voice, we want you to sing the intro. This is the true story of seven strangers picked to live in lost. And I got to, this is the true story, and they just fell out laughing. And I'm like, all right, I'll do better. And they're like, no, that's all we need. We got what we wanted. And they just took that. That little, that little portion at the beginning, yeah. 
And so that's how that, that's how those two things unfolded. Those are my two <laughs> hashtags. So, uh, yeah, you're known for these things. You had fun on the show is what it sounds like. Uh, we got a nice little comment here, uh, from BL. I love John. I love his heart, strength, kindness, faith. And he's a, uh, Oh, he's somebody's dream man. Okay. Well, see, the eat, comments your heart, are... eat your heart out, Eric Meese, Mark Long, Brad, <laughs> all you people, eat your heart out. This is this is the this is what you get. Um, well, I, I guess I have nothing else to say, and um, I thank you for doing the show. What a creative way hey. to do my show, um, just by hearing me talk about you <laughs> and and yeah. make it make it fun. Like I said, my thing was like I was going to put up the uh, information where anyone wants to get your merch, JohnBrennan.com. Like I was going to support you, but yeah, you can say whatever you want to say. I'm just going to always have my opinion back, and that's what's hey, making my hey, no, it's you're good, you're good. Hey, here's an idea. Me and you and Mike Lewis, we should do the real world. All right. We should get some other <laughs> podcasters and make our own real world, put it on YouTube. And, uh, you know, it's not just real world people that need to be on these shows, but all you awesome podcasters ought to, uh, you know, be in there. Um, you know, from the Challenge Mania, we have Scott Yeager. And that yeah, dude, they do great. Awesome, dude. Yeah. They, there's a lot of great big, uh, you know, fans and podcasters out there. And, and uh, I think you should be cast on one of these shows, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, I mean, everybody that's listening, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Brennan underscore com. I'm on Facebook. Um, I'm, I'm verified. So that means I'm important. Right. So you'll know it's me because you'll see the blue check. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'd love for you to follow my journey. Well, I, I want you to have a ton of fun with this experience because, again, you're not at that young 20-something-year-old age where so much is you know, available to you. So any step that you're navigating day by day, know that you're doing it at your age, which is a little bit older than me. But me as a 41-year-old, I'm looking at that, you know, sort of looking up to it. Like, okay, this is how I'll navigate my career because we all know once you hit that certain age, things get a little bit more difficult, but dreams don't go away. So how, what, what, what is one to do, yeah. you know? And so you, for me, I took it to YouTube. I have my Patreon account. Anyone want to support patreon.com slash randomly Ronnie Jr. You know, you have to do what you have to do. Age is nothing but a number, but it is definitely a challenge. So the chance for people to stick together and support is a good thing. When you say you like the Mike Lewis podcast, I'm like, I, I think it's great too. I think he's young, he's dedicated, and he's accomplished a lot in a short time. So kudos to him and kudos to anyone who's, um, trying to make their dreams happen well that's it for yeah. me hashtag randomly with ronnie jr is where you could see all of my stuff because i got several series and john brennan you were pretty cool i watched you on tv when i was 12 <laughs> and look at you now <laughs> hey. well all you the know the thing the is for me i just want to say thank you so much for having me making me feel relevant again and you know my my, my goals haven't changed I, I wanted to sing country music in 1993 i want to sing it again i mean I, it's still in my heart so when you see me, this is what you get, and I appreciate uh, folks like you that uh, that make me, you know, feel like I'm still important enough to get on and talk about real life. And you know, the real world's been a crazy, awesome experience, and I uh, appreciate you having me on uh, your podcast, and look forward to it again in the future. This was a lot of fun. That was John Brennan. Let's see him on a Challenge All Stars. That's that's yeah. what we need to see next. All right, we are out of here. Bye, John. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you.